Welcome and thank you for standing by. All participants are on a listen only mode for the duration of today's conference. Today's call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to your host, Wendy Peebles from the US Census Bureau. Wendy, you may begin. Great, thank you, Anthony. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Live HS Commodity Classification. This is the second webinar as part of our World Trade Month webinar series, and we're glad that you have joined us today. Um, we will, you know, as you know, May is World Trade Month and in the U.S. and is an opportunity to recognize the importance of exporting to the U.S. economy. This month especially is a way to celebrate the positive economic impact that global trade has. And we want to continue to encourage U.S. businesses to begin exporting or to expand their exporting opportunities globally. So today we're in for a special treat where you have an opportunity to get your merchandise classified. And the presenter is Crystal Carmen. I'd like to share with you a little background information on Ms. Carmen. Crystal Carmen works in U.S. Census Bureau Economic Indicators Division in the International Trade Indicator Microanalysis Branch. She is the Section Chief for Metals and Machinery and is responsible for ensuring the accuracy and quality of trade statistics for these commodity areas. Through numerous webinars and support compliance seminars, Ms. Carmen trains members of the trade community about commodity classification rules and resources. She received her bachelor's degree in management from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University and master's certificate in project management and business analysis from the George Washington University School of Business. So enjoy today's webinar and Crystal will give you specific instructions on how to enter in your commodity descriptions for classification. Crystal, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Thank you. Hi, Wendy. Thank you. As Wendy stated, my name is Crystal Carmen and I work in an international trade indicator microanalysis branch in the economic indicators division. Um, today we are going to do some live classifications. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of background on the um, classification number. So we're going to do that first and then we're going to jump into the classification. If you have any questions or need assistance classifying your products once this webinar is over, our contact information is at the bottom of this first slide. We have a um, Schedule B box and also a call center. And if you call the call center and need help with classification, you will select option two. Um, so just a little bit of information about the classification code. What is this 10-digit code? Um, it is a 10-digit code that is used to classify products that are being imported and exported from the United States. On the import side, it is known as the Harmonized Tariff Schedule, or HTS. On the, on the export side, it is the Schedule B. And what exactly do all of these numbers mean? The first two numbers are what we refer to as the HS chapter, and these two digits change infrequently. Four digit is what we call the HS heading, and it is updated about every five years by the World Customs Organization, or WCO. The six digit subheading is also updated every five, about every five years with the w, uh, WCO update. We had a major update um, this year in 2022. If you're an exporter, I'm pretty sure you're already aware of how many changes there were. Um, and the good thing to point out about this, um, I mentioned that the HS code is used for imports and exports. When you're the up to the six digit level, the import and export codes match. Um, so that's just a tidbit of information about that. At the eight digit level, that is what we call the legal or tariff subheading, and that only applies to imports, and it's where duties and tariffs are assessed when goods are imported into, into the United States. And then your four ten, full 10 digit code is the statistical code, um, and this is how we collect our data, classify our products, and publish our data products. And these um, codes are updated semi-annually, usually in January and July by 44F decisions. So now we're going to jump right into um, our live classification. I do have uh, colleagues with me monitoring our chat box. And the way that this is going to work um, is if you have a, a product you would like classified, you will enter it into the chat box. They will give me the name of the person um, whose product we're going to classify. Uh, if you hear your name, I will need you to raise your hand. And then after you raise your hand, 
Anthony will unmute you so that we can have a conversation and get your product classified. So if anybody wants to jump into the chat box, we can go ahead and start with uh, the classifications. Okay, so TK Vang, if you could raise your hand so that you could be unmuted. Oh, and I'm sorry, while we're waiting for TK to be unmuted, I forgot to give you our website to get to the search engine. It is www.census.gov slash schedule B. And once you get there, you will click on search to get to the search engine. Um, okay, TK, are you on the line? You might want to go on to someone else. I tried to unmute the person and I, we didn't hear anything though coming from their line. Okay. Um, Anthony with electric vehicle chargers. If you can raise your hand. Good afternoon. Hello, Anthony, how are you? I'm doing great and excited for this class. Um, so, yeah. so we uh, also I already have already have you on the line, but anybody yeah. else is putting a item in a chat box. This is not a stump the presenter. We're here to to work through these products together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so um, all right, and our, so your product was tell me what your product was again. Electric vehicle chargers. Okay, so what I'm gonna just start with is what you told me is electric vehicle charger, and we're gonna see what the Yes, I am. And then we'll hit classify and see what we get. And while we're going through this, I'm going to, um, with your product as the first one, talk a little bit about how the search engine works. Um, one thing to remember when you're using the search engine is that it does not recognize parts, numbers. You have to actually tell it, describe the product, what it is. Um, and the way we like to think about how products, uh, you describe it is what it is, what it does, or what it's made out of. So, um, and then the Crystal? search engine, yes. This is John with EID. Uh, yes. We're still seeing your uh, PowerPoint presentation. We're not seeing the web page. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, John. What about now? You see it now? Okay, um, so I'm gonna go back in. Electric. Okay, so once you um, once you tell the search engine, what it is, it'll kind of make some assumptions based off of what, how you described your product. So what it's telling us in this first section is here's what we know, is that we told it was a charger. So based off of what we tell it, it's gonna need to know more about our product. Um, so we're just gonna work through this list and see what happens. Is it an electric rotary converter, electric static converter, or a charger plate? Um, no, it's, it's one of the chargers that you use to charge your, um car like a tesla or a volkswagen okay so we don't think it's any of these things no ma'am okay so we'll have to go back and let's just start with charger and see what happens oh it's going to ask us the same thing probably it is asking us the and but it charges it uh, oh. Okay, this might be a good time for, for me to show you, for, for us to show you all another tool that we use in our office. Um, and like I mentioned when I was going through the, the makeup of the HS code, the import codes and export codes match up to the six digit, six digit level. So we use a tool in our office sometimes, it's called CROSS, which is the Customs Ruling Online Search System. 
And what this system is, is people, when they import things and have questions about how they should be classified, customs can actually review the product and make a ruling on it. Um, and it is a binding ruling. The thing about exports is we have no binding rulings. So when using this system, if you look it up, um, we are going to look it up and find and see if there see first if there is a customs ruling forward. And then we'll look at the first six digits of what custom says. Well, we'll read through the ruling to make sure it is what, what it is um, that we're looking for. And then we'll take those first six digits and go back to the Schedule B and see if we can find a corresponding export number. So um, I spell vehicle wrong again. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so as we can, if when we're looking through these rulings, we can see that on the date on uh, March of this year, actually, um, Customs made a ruling about a tariff classification for electrical vehicle charging stations from Mexico. That sounds like what um what we are classifying. So let's just take a look, glance at the ruling and charger stations. This. Kind of looks like what we're looking for, and based and based off the customs ruling, it looks like it should be in Chapter eighty five, um, heading eighty five hundred four, and then subheading forty. So we'll go back to the search engine with those six digits. Another thing to point out about the search engine is if you know um, a chapter or a heading or a subheading that you need to be in, you can put those numbers into the search engine, and it'll take you to um, that particular part of the Schedule B book. 8504. Okay. Um, so it looks like it took us to chapter 85, electrical machinery um, and equipment and parts thereof, 8504, electrical transformers, static converters, and inductors, power supplies for automated data processing machines or units mm -hmm. thereof. And then Um, just because I noticed off the top of my head, 8471 is like computer, so it's not a computer. Um, and so we'll open the other section. The other means as anything other than these descriptions up here. Um, and anytime you see a plus sign when you're in the Schedule B search, make sure you click on it because it means that there are more descriptions there. So we're going into power supplies. Um, do you know the output of the charging stations? Do you know the output of our charger? 32 amps. 32 amps. Do we know that what that is in watts? No. Um, we'll have to convert it from amps to watts. But what you want to do is once you find out what it is, I'm gonna think it whatever the wattage is. Okay. 7680. 7680. Okay. So these are specifically the first one is not exceeding 50 watts. The second one is um exceeding 50 but not 150. And the third one here is exceeding 150 but not exceeding 500. But it seems like it exceeds that. So we'll go with the other, which is this 10 digit code right here, the 8540. I'm sorry, 8504, 40, 95, 50, because it's a power supply, but the wattage is more than what is listed in these first three numbers. Um, and once you find your full 10 digit code, you want to look on the far right hand side to see what the unit of a measure is. In this case, it's going to be number. NO stands for number. Some people think it stands for no unit of quantity required, but you should report the, um, the number of units that you're, the number of, of um, units that you're shipping. And then um, you'll be good to go. Okay, I'm sorry. Just that that last part. Um, how are you able to tell the difference between ninety five forty and ninety five fifty? Um. So if like you look the at the, we're 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 reading the um indentations here. So if you're looking, we have power supplies here. So yes. all of these 
these things, these four, based off of the indentations that are here, that means they go under the power supplies. If you look at this other right here, it's kind of in line with, I wish I had a point. It's kind of in line, the same, it's the same number of indentations over as a power supply. So this other means that it's anything other than a power supply. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, you have, to, you have to look at the indentations and see how things are lined up. Got it. And it can be a little, um, I can see why it could be a little confusing here. But if you count the number of dashes, like is one, five, six, seven, eight. So these have like three dashes at the end, and this one only has two, which means it's in line with this power supply up here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and um, just one last question. Sometimes yes. um, we have to ship our, our uh, electric chargers with a, a metallic pedestal made of, okay. you know, it's steel. And uh, how would we classify that if it's like two different products that are put together? So if, well, if the, um, if the pedestal is not valued over $2,500, oh. um, which is the value threshold that we have, if the, if the product that you're sending does not require a license, the value threshold for needing the classification number is $2,500. So if you were filing the shipment, if you were filing it and you were sending the stations and the stands, um, my suggestion would be that you would classify the station and then just use the low value exemption for the stand. Low value exemption. Yeah, it's a low value exemption, um, 30.37A. And that means that what you're shipping is valued less than $2,500 per Schedule B number. Unless you were sending enough of stands that the value would be $2,500, then we would have to classify the, the stands. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. And um, before we move on to the next one, since I have it pulled up, one other thing that I want to point out that's helpful about the search engine is once you have your Schedule B number here, if you click on this tab to the right, these are what we call the legal notes. And these are super helpful because it kind of tells you what... In, it provides more detail about what is classified in a chapter and also what is not classified in a particular chapter. Um, so for like this one, just as an example, it says that transmission and conveyor belts are under 5910 and they don't go in this chapter. So it's just like more information about what's in the chapter and what's not in the chapter. And if it's not in the chapter, um, where you can, where you should be able to find it. Okay, and then we're going to move on to our next person. Oh, hold on. I think I think we may have found a better number for your classification. Okay, um, Anthony, are you still online? Um, yes, I'll unmute him. If he's, if he's not, that's okay. He, um, so my colleagues have been doing a little, we're, we're having a, I'm here. we have a whole team, we have a whole team over here. So the oh, power gosh. supply for the charger station is, would be the 8504, um, but the actual charging station would be, we're going to go to 95, chapter 95. Oh, I'm sorry. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what they were explaining to me is that the um the actual power supply is the first number that I gave you. And then the actual charging station would be 850440. And then you would use the 9550 for the actual charging station. 95. Because it's the two, it's the two pieces. The power supply goes here, and then the actual charger part would go under the ninety-five fifty. Got it. Sorry for the confusion. No, thank you for the clarification. Okay, you're well. And if you again, if you have any other questions, you can give us a call at our on our call center or um, send us an email. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next person. Um, Diego LCD displays. 
If you could raise your hand, okay. All right, Diego, are you on the line? Go ahead, Diego, your line's open. Oh. Hello, Diego? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right, so you're doing LCD display, so we'll start with that um, as our product, describe our product. Um, so it needs to know, uh, is uh, we told it that it is a liquid crystal display and it assumes some things about um, what we what we told it and what it assumed it is that it is not a toy. And I'm assuming also that it is not a toy. So we don't have to make any changes there. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to know a little, bit, a little bit more about the fitting. Does it have drivers or control circuits or does it not? Yes, it does. Okay, so it does. Okay, so um, again, we're back in the machinery chapter. Um, the heading reads flat display modules, whether or not incorporating touch sensitive screens. Um, and, and the options that we have are um, the screen is of liquid crystals, of organic light emitting diodes, or is it something other than either one of those things? It should be other. It should be other? Yep. Okay, so then your number is going to be 8524991000. And again, you want to report the number of LCD displays that you will be exporting. All right, got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, Maja. I believe I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I am okay if I'm mispronouncing your name. Are you on the line? Maja, am I am I pronouncing your name correctly? It's Maya. Maya. Oh, okay. Sorry, it was the screen was far away. Okay, so what is it that you're um what it is that you're shipping? So it's actually a tray, a mini tray, and in it half of it has cheese and the other half has crackers. Okay. So the first question I want to ask you before we go through the search engine is it is it valued over two thousand five hundred dollars? Enough of it would be. Enough of it would be okay. <laughs> so okay, so one half is cheese and one half is cracker. So let's start with the cheese. And it's in one product. Oh, the cheese and cracker. Okay. Yeah, it's one tray that's been sealed. So half of it has cheese and the other half has mini crackers. Okay. So this is this is what we would consider a mixture or combination. Um okay. and if you had to pick one side, would would you say that the cheese gives the it more value or that the crackers gives it more value? Gives it more or value. Which take, or which takes up more space? Or they take up the same amount of space and it's okay. a one to one. So you get one piece of cheese per one cracker. Okay. So what we would do in this case is we're gonna look for the we're gonna yeah, we're gonna look for the classification for both of the numbers because with mixtures and combinations, you classify it in the highest um schedule B number, which means the one that is farther down in schedule B book. So we'll have to look for the number for the cheese and then the number for the crackers, and then we will see which one, decide which one we're going to use. Okay? okay. So is the cheese fresh, processed, uh, containing veins produced other. by, don't know what that means, or is it something don't else? Worry about it. It's other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so is it. Let's cheese? go with cheddar. Let's go with cheddar. Okay, so let's remember that cheddar cheese is 040690. Okay. And then for the crackers, um, 
Um, I'm going to go with crisp, savory food product and not something that's going in a machine. Yes. Okay. So the crackers are, they belong in chapter 19. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is, let's see, Brad Pracy's other, um, we're going to go with 1905, 90, 90, 90 for other because, unless it's a corn chip. Is it a corn it's chip? It's not a corn chip. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so because the 19 is high uh, is higher in the Schedule B book than the um, cheese, because oh, four, 19, 19 comes after four, so we're in chapter 19, you would use the 1905 to classify it, because that's how we classify mixtures and combinations. And then we also want to know if the tray is reusable, or does it only go with the cheese and the crackers? It only goes with the cheese and crackers. Okay. All right. So yeah, you will use the 1905-90-90-90, and your unit of uh, measure will be kilograms. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um. I believe a Robert. Oh. Uh, Martina, I'm S, I don't even want to try. Okay, yes, Martina has raised their hand. Um, this is Anthony. I heard you say Robert, but Robert, I think your line's open now if you have a question. Okay, Martina, you can unmute. Hi, Martina. Martina, are you there? Hello? Yes, Martina. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. So, so what um, is it I'll, that you're shipping? Yeah, our company makes scientific equipment. And one of the equipments we ship is called breadboard, optical breadboard. It's basically um, a metal, sometimes a metal, um, just metal sheet with hole with periodic drill hole in it. And we want to see how it's being classified because we have different entity and we everybody kind of classify differently. <laughs> we okay. just want to see if we can get a unify, like um, how to classify it properly. Okay, so what is what is it called again? It's called optical breadboard. So let's, let's just put that in and see what comes Yeah, up. there's some cross ruling, but the cross ruling are very um, like company specific. I just don't know whether we can use that. Okay. Um, so I put optical breadboard in the search engine and it's, I spelled everything correctly, right? Like bread yes. is in, okay. That breadboard um, is one word you usually use. I don't know, oh. would it be a matter? So it's doing one board, yeah. Okay, so this doesn't look like it's taking us down the path. Yeah. Oh, well, base metal, you said it's made out of- It's like metal base metal. Right? So see some some our division just say is an article of aluminum, but we call them like part of a test bench because the test is kind of use it for a scientific experiment. So people use it, put it on top of the table and do okay. experiment with it, with uh, mounting um, other equipment on top of it. So that's the the the, the disagreement okay so just, what um, yeah what type of metal is it made out of um, mostly aluminum but we do make them in steel and we do sometimes um, not just a metal sometimes they would have metal with called honeycomb structure in between so there is like very like many design we have different design okay. and th th that's why we there is so many disagreement because uh, some are just basically a sheet metal with hole drill in it, and that's they they can be say article of metal, 
but some of them I have mixed material now I have aluminum on the side, but stainless steel on top and bottom with a honeycomb structure in the middle. And that's where we, we probably need help. <laughs> in but it, it, is, it. it is testing equipment. It's not a testing equipment It's where okay. test equipment sit on top. That's okay. why we were thinking of like part of a test bench. Gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, it could, it could, um, have to be what is, what is, uh, it could be, have to, it, we could have to classify it. And I know that there are different, you know, classifications, yeah. but what it's made out of, but let's see. Um, and that's why it says some, sometimes it's just one material, but there is time that certain design, um, I like three or four different material and that's where we become like that. So we most of the time we classify under six, uh, 90, 31 chapter. Uh -huh. Because yeah. we just a uh, 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 part of a test bench, and I I feel like that might honestly be the best place for it to go. Mm -hmm. So you put it here. Yeah. Um, well, some of the time we'd have a table, but sometimes we say part of oh, a test bench. Put... Just, just yeah. So it's uh, yeah, the it's under parts and accessory. Yeah, and I I. I think that we agree that it should be, that's what it should be. Um, because it is part of it, that's what it's being used for. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I would say okay. I would say stick with the 9031. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Instead of just article of the the base metal, yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. All Thank right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, someone requested cattle feed. Um, I am not sure how to pronounce your name. It starts with a V. v Vera. Uh, if you could raise your hand, if you requested cattle feed, could you raise your hand? Okay, gotcha. Are you on the line? Yes, R K G Raj. Okay, so what is it that you're shipping? Alpha, alpha. Alpha, alpha. A L A L. F A L. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Okay. Um. So is it live or other? What is it? Is is what you're shipping, is it live or is it not alive? No, not live, of course. Okay, so is it um meal or pellet or is it something other than meal or pellet? Like what, a, what form is it in? Well, it's in a pellet, yes. It's a pellet, okay. Um, is it dehydrated or is it not dehydrated? It's dehydrated. It's dehydrated. So we'll click on dehydrated to open that section. And then a couple more questions. Um, if it's cubed, you will use 1214.10.0010. If it is not in cubes, you will use 1214.10.0015. And your unit of measure will be in tons. Okay, I think it is in cubes. So okay. One, yeah, one two one four one zero 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 one two. That'll be your code. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Um. We're not seeing it. I'm not seeing anybody else in the chat. Does anybody else have anything that they would like to classify? You can drop it in the chat. Um, Connie Brown, 
has raised their hand. Solenoid, if you could um, unmute Connie. Hello. Hello. Hi, Connie. Hi. So we we're doing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So it needs to know if it is e electromagnet or starting equipment. Of course, I have no idea, um, <laughs> but let's go with starting equipment. Okay, yeah, so one of the things is when, when you call us to, like if you're calling the call center to get assistance, um, you know more about your product than we do, so um, any other information that you can have to, to give to us would be super helpful. Um, so it's giving us 851180. Um, do you know if it's designed for use on 6, 12, or 24 volt systems? Yeah, I don't know that either. Okay. But but so. I've been doing some searching with my engineers. Okay. Um, it, it's a component part in a final assembly of a bigger machine. Um, but I was curious why 851184,000 uh, is number of, but the other, the next one is kilograms. So why would we see a difference? of unit of measure um that is actually beyond the scope of a question that i can answer right now but if you would like to send that question to the schedule b box um then someone can get back to you okay all right okay thank you you're welcome thank you Hello, Kelly with the motor driven trolley. If you could um, raise your hand. Are you on the line, Kelly? All right, Kelly, your line should be open now. You can click on mute. Kelly? Yep. Can you okay. hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. So um, the motor driven trolley goes to that question that uh, Martina had also uh, with parts and accessories. Uh, it It is used in manufacturing. It rides on the bottom of a beam and it usually holds another piece of equipment underneath it. It can have, you know, a hoist in 842511 or 842519 attached to it, but the trolley itself is sold separately. Okay. So um, I put in trolley as describe your product, um, and the options are pushed or pull a vehicle or trolley as a part of machinery or mechanical appliances. I would go with part of machinery and mechanical appliances. Okay. And um, one thing, another thing to note before we go move forward um, about the Schedule B search engine, if you're, if you click on an option here, and you're like, oh, wait, I don't feel like I'm going in the right direction. You can always go back and choose another option. Um, just a little thing to point out there. Okay, so we have some, it needs to know more about the piece of machinery. Um, is it machinery for other purposes, for working materials or hand tools? Um, domestic appliances, machinery for, me for mechanical appliances for spraying, projecting, or dispersing, or- I'm gonna go with other, other purposes. Other purposes. Um, so you wanna go with the other here at the bottom, or- Or that first one that you said. For spraying, okay. Oh, machinery for other purposes, gotcha. Okay, so it needs to know a little bit more about the machinery. Um, reading through this list, do any of these look like 
what it's used for. Um, and again, um, if you're looking through the list and you don't see anything specifically, we can always choose other, which means it is machinery, but it's none of these things that are listed. What would the difference between uh, machinery not elsewhere specified or included and other be? I would actually have to click on them to see like where they fall in the schedule review book. I can't, I, without seeing the descriptions, I can't give you an answer to that question. So, so I, I would we, say it would be one of those two. Okay, so we can start with this one and then um, it has a couple of other questions. Other. Is Electrical there... element, yes. Okay. And so this takes us to 8479 for machines and mechanical appliances having individual function not specified or included elsewhere in this chapter and parts thereof. Um, so in this case, it is um, having us to classify it as, let's see, parts 8490. Yeah, uh, I'm, just, I'm not sure why this is just jumped to, jumped to parts, but we have is, is 8479.89. I just wanted to be sure we're in the right ballpark. Okay. Well, it might have to do with which one we, we chose. That. There or the other other. What is the number that you said you all are using? 8479.89. Yeah, but there's some contention of if this belongs here or if this belongs as parts, because it's used in conjunction with a hoist, which falls under 8425.11. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people think that this trolley should be used as parts, but we sell them as separate separate entities. They can be used together, but it doesn't, you know, a hoist doesn't have to have a trolley. You know, right. so that's where we consider it an accessory, but how does how do you, does this consider something accessory versus parts? Um, it's really, it, because Schedule B codes have no binding rulings, we can't say um, yes or no to a thing. We can just help to classify to the best of our knowledge and your knowledge when you um, give us a product to classify. Um, uh -huh. And it seems like you all are classifying it correctly. Um, and just a reminder that parts have their own that have their own classification number should be classified as what it is as that instead of a part and accessory to a machine. Um, that's kind of where the parts and accessories, how you determine what is considered a part and accessory as opposed to the actual thing. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Come, uh, Danielle asked for bearings. If Danielle could raise their hand, Danielle. Danielle's microphone is not working. Okay. Um, um, okay, Julie with a needle set, I believe, if you could raise your hand and we can see if we can get you unmuted. Hi. 
Hi, Julie. Uh, it looks okay. like I did send a notification to unmute, but um, looks like she might not be able to unmute. Okay, so I'm just going to um, go through a bearing example. Um, we'll just do uh, ball or roller bearings. Um, and then we'll say it's a thrust bearing. And let's say it's going to go on a motorcycle. Um, and in this case, that bearing would, uh, the number that came back was as a part and accessory to vehicles of headings 8711 to 8713 because we chose motorcycle. Um, and then it's probably going to go under the other number, the 87141000090. And the unit of measure would be kilograms. Um, but let's say we said it was a plane shaft bearing. Um, and as you can see here, as a, as, as uh, different as the motorcycle bearing that the plane shaft bearings have their actual, have an actual schedule B number. So you would go through and um, keep it, clicking the pluses to expand the options. If it was with the housing um, and it was a rod and bearing, this, uh, this particular schedule B number has two units of quantity. So you would enter in the number and it's kilograms, or if it was without housing, um, you would choose one of these numbers, the 84, 80, so it would be in 84, 83, 30, um, and you would just want to make sure that you expand it and find your full 10-digit code. Um, so for the knitting needles, We would use that as our describe your product. Um, it's making some assumptions. It's assuming that it's not an antique, it's not magnetic, it's not a toy, and some other things. If all of those things are correct, then you can just leave the assumed characteristics um, as they are. Um, and some things that it knows is that the composition is a base metal um, or steel. So it takes us to 7319. And you want to read your description just to make sure you're in the right place. Um, sewing needles, knitting needles, bockings, crochet hooks, embroidery stilettos, and similar articles for use in the hand of iron steel, safety pins, and other pins of iron steel not elsewhere specified or indicated. Um, if it's a sewing, darning, or embroidery, embroidery needle, you would use 7319, 90, 1000, and your using of measure is thousands. If it is something other than a sewing, darning, or a embroidery needle, you would use 7319, 90, 9,000, and your unit of quantity would be number. Um, okay, Debbie with biological items, if you could raise your hand and see if we can get you unmuted. Debbie, are you on the line? Debbie, your line is open. While we're trying to get um, Debbie unmuted, I did want to point out a few other things, helpful things that are on our website. When you're in the search engine, if you um, scroll down, you can find a um, YouTube video that uh, it, export training video on how to classify your product. Um, and also our contact information is here, our Schedule B number and um, the phone number. 
Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, perfect. So what is it that you're shipping? Okay, so we usually ship out biomedical uh, items. It's for biotechnology research use only okay. and not for inhuman. And sometimes we end up, my discrepancy is like with the sizes. Sometimes it just, the item that we've been using just always describes things as uh, kilograms in units of measure. And I was wondering, is there a basic one that we could use that can can break it down if we have items that are in micrograms or microliters? No, the unit of quantity that is assigned um, with that Schedule B number is the one that has to be reported. Okay, okay. So is the one that we use, the 3822.19, suitable for what we do? Okay, so what was the number? 3819. 3822. I'm sorry, 3822. 22. Um, so, I mean, because you do know your product better than we do, based off of what you said, it seems like it's a suitable number. Um, okay. Yeah, but um, as I mentioned before, export codes don't have binding ruling, so we can't say absolutely yes or absolutely no. All right. Um, but if you're doing if you're doing your due diligence and you're classifying your products to the best of your ability and you're not intentionally misclassifying them, then yeah. um, you shouldn't have any problems. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're almost um, close to out of time. And before I um, let you all go, I do want to show you some other useful information that is on our website. Um, again, you can find our contact information if we didn't get to you today. But um, if you send us an email or you call our call center, just make sure you have as much information um, available about your product. Um, as I mentioned in the opening, there was a major revision to um, the... Schedule B this year, we had a lot of codes updated. And I just wanted to point out some things on our front page that may be helpful for you. We went over the search. Also, um, you can browse the Schedule B book if you would like to. And sometimes, since we were talking about unit of quantity a little bit with um, Debbie, if you have questions about what units of quantity are, you can find conversion tables here. Um, and also the abbreviations for each unit of quantity that is in the Schedule B. Um, which is super helpful. Also, one file that has really, really been helpful when numbers change is what we call our obsolete, our obsolete codes. And if you click on this file, it actually opens up um, a file that gives you all of the codes that have been changed. Well, the obsolete code, and then it gives you a corresponding new Schedule B number, uh, just in case you've been using a number for you know 10 years and all of a sudden it's not working. And uh, you check the obsolete to new, and you see that there has been a new code. Um, this gives you the old Schedule B with the corresponding um, new Schedule B code. Um, that is super helpful. And we might have time for one more quick, one more quick one. I think Lester, um, your line is open. Yes, thank you. Hi, Lester. Hi. What I is have, it that, uh, uh -huh. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. What is it that you're shipping? I, I, we, we manufacture uh, things for uh, aircraft, and I have uh, what the, the blueprint calls it a uh, 90 degree shrink boot, and it's made of uh, a, a fluid resistant elastomer which is kind of like a, a silicone so it's a it's a boot it literally just gets put over the uh, electrical connector and then it's heated with a heat gun and it just shrinks and it just covers the outside of it okay so, so what is it made what is it made what, out of uh, uh elastomer fluid resistant elastomer so when i when i look if I look for shrink or boot, shrink boot, there's nothing in the system like that. So am I just looking for the material? Then when I looked under, you know, elastomer, I, I find codes. 
39.00.000. So, I mean, is that, I guess that's what I have to go with, right? Yeah, what it's made out of. If, if you can find what the product is made out of, then yes, you can use that. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's what I want okay. to wear. I'll have other things like that where the description isn't going to do me any good. I have to look for what, what it's made, made out of. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, one more question. Okay. Could you explain what you were talking about, the $2,500 limit? What, what does that pertain to? I think I, I missed that at the beginning. So it's the low, it's what is called the low value exemption. Um, and if you are shipping a product that is valued less, if your products are valued less than $2,500 per Schedule B number, and it does not require a license, then when you're filing your paperwork, you can use the low value exemption. Um, our office strictly uh, helps with classifying those. So if you have questions concerning actually filing it, I would suggest that you reach out to the AES branch um, and they could be able to help you or either our regulations branch. Okay, so it's the product, so you would still have an HTS code for it, but because you're just moving a low vo lower volume than that, you could be exempt from the tariffs and duties. Am I understanding that right? So we don't deal with tariff and duties when you are exporting from the United States. Um, that is something that is assessed with the country that you're importing into, and I cannot speak to that. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I think that we are going to uh, wrap up our live classification. Um, again, if you have any, I hope it's been helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, via our email, which is eid.schedulebb at census.gov. Or you can give us a call at 1-800-549-0595. And we are option two. If you have any other questions concerning exporting, you can also reach the other um branches that I, the AES branch that I just mentioned, and also regulations on that same call center line. Okay, and Wendy, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Okay, great, thank Crystal, excellent job. Thank you so much. You were able to just pivot from chapter to chapter. So so thank you very much. And and thank you to all the, um, the chat assistants to um, identify the companies needing um, assistance with classifying their merchandise. So certainly thank you. And also thanks to all the businesses because um, you've taken the time today to ensure that your, your product is properly classified and this greatly impacts our trade statistics. We are a statistical agency. So we, we just thank you as well. It looked like there were like 135 plus on. We know that we couldn't address all the calls, all, all your questions today, but we certainly thank you. At least you could see the process. So when you go back, you can see the effort that it takes in reading the description and make sure you use the um, correct unit of measure and, and just, you know, determining the best um, classification for your commodity. So certainly want to thank you. I learned a lot today. So once again, thanks to Crystal and then just want to ask that you Complete the evaluations. Your important your feedback is important to us and it assists in um, preparing future content. So once again, thank you for joining and we hope that you can join next week for our final webinar in recognition of World Trade Month, which will be on surviving and thriving and we will have three export um, businesses on and they they will talk about their challenges and um, strategies um, in um, dealing with the pandemic. So that will close out our webinar series. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. This completes our webinar. Thank you. You may disconnect at this time.